Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. All right, so let's say you want to find out what each level of testosterone feels like without getting a blood test. This is the perfect video for you from someone who's not only been studying this for over two decades, but from someone who's been both at the low and the high end of the testosterone range multiple times. So I'll be the first to tell you exactly uh, how each uh, level, each range feels like. Not to mention, I also have a lot of experience with my clients, both natural and on PEDs, and people who went back and forth between natty, natural, and enhanced, blah, blah, blah. So I have a ton of data to work with, a ton of experience, as well as the overwhelming scientific literature on humans and animals. So I'm going to put all of that together into this video and explain to you exactly how each level feels. Now, I'm dumbing down a lot of things here. I'm oversimplifying things. For example, I'm using testosterone levels. But if you're familiar with the channel, you already know that the levels don't really mean nothing uh, outside of the context of net androgen status. Okay, so watch my videos on that if you want to get caught up. Long story short, this is assuming equal net androgen status, which is not the case for most people, right? You could be up here, but if your cortisol is too high, then you're not going to have the effects of that, right? Not to mention the effects of genetics and personality and things like that, right? So I'm dumbing things down just to get the information out to as most people as possible, All right? So let's say, let's start at the bottom, right? Let's say you're under 50 nanogram per deciliter. What does that feel like? Now, disclaimer, I've never been, to my knowledge, uh, I've never been under 50. The lowest I've been was around 150, which is around here, but I'm going to get to that in a minute. And it was terrible. Oh, my God. All right, so if you're under 50 nanograms per deciliter, right? So that's castration levels. That's lower than the average woman. The average woman is around 25 30 to 40, depending on the country, it changes, and depending on the, the female's BMI, her body fat, it changes. But most women don't go above 50 to 70. So if you're under 50, you have less testosterone than a woman. Um, now, for women, it's fine, obviously. Uh, for men, you screwed. You're, so how does it feel like? Your, number one is your sex drive. Your sex drive becomes non-existent. And when I say non-existent, I mean somebody can even show you porn or an attractive naked woman I call it the bad bitch test. Watch my video that I did uh, a few days ago on the different tests you could do at home to know your net energy status. But somebody could show you the most attractive naked woman and you still wouldn't get an, you know, an erection. No erection, no reaction as well, no arousal. You just don't care, right? You become very, very apathetic to, 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 uh, to things like that. That is one of the first things you're going to notice when you go under 50. You do not care about sex. Because remember, guys, testosterone is what it is a sex hormone despite what everybody tells you the goal of testosterone is not to build muscle it's not to lose fat all of those things are you know things that actually come with the package the number one goal is reproduction so the moment t tanks your sex drive goes to trash so that's one of the first things you're going to notice the second thing you're going to notice and if you want to start with my clients well i can't really go into details because it's private information but long story short Clients who went under 50, usually it's because they got off of TRT or they got off of steroids or they were waiting for their uh, HPGA system to kick back on. The, I mean, it, they almost wanted to, well, I can't say the words, I don't want to get canceled, but you know where I'm going, right? They almost wanted to do the thing, you know, which obviously I don't recommend. Uh, please get some help if you're struggling with this. Um, so sex drive was non-existent. Um, and I feel bad for the wife because the wife was, you know, they told me the wife was complaining that uh, she wasn't getting any. But anyway, next thing you don't notice is your motivation for status, which is really your aggression. When we use the word aggression, guys, all aggression is, both in humans and animals, is motivation for status. That's all it is, right? That's the dumbed down version of it. Aggression, that's physical and mental aggression. Um, even positive aggression, which is, you know, wanting to just conquer things, whatever. It's all motivation for status. All right, you could go down the rabbit hole on that. You could go down the newer scientific literature. That's all it is. It's your body trying to achieve status, and depending on how you were raised, depending on your environment, it will usually manifest itself through physical violence, or even you know um, assault. You know other other methods of achieving status. If you were raised in a society where you get status from being rich, then your aggression would be through acquiring as many resources as possible. So anyway. So when you're under 50 nanograms per deciliter, your aggression goes to goes to trash, right? You have zero motivation for status. You don't. In fact, that's one of the reasons why it leads to depression. You don't care about anything. You don't care about your status. You don't care about money. You don't care about 
uh, your reputation. You don't care about honor. You don't care about anything, right? So that's one of the first things you're going to notice. Next thing you'll notice is your energy levels are going to tank, right? It's going to take you forever to get off the bed in the morning, even after sleeping. Um, you have no energy to get up, no energy to, uh, be, believe it or not, again, this is a little TMI, but some, some people actually don't want to take showers, you know? They just don't care. You know, they're extremely tired. Um, your red blood cell production is going to go down. Your VO2 max is going to go down. Your resting heart rate is going to go up. Very, very low energy levels. Uh, mainly because of testosterone's effect on fatigue and EPO and things like that. Next thing you're going to notice is your anxiety and fear. Now, that one is 50-50. You know, depends on your personality trait. But usually, if you're prone to anxiety, your anxiety will go through the roof. So you're going to be scared of things that you're normally not afraid of. Your anxiety is going to go through the roof. Uh, you're going to feel depressed. Your mood is going to tank. You know, um, and that's tied to the, you know, drop in dopamine signaling. And another thing that's going to happen is your pain tolerance, you know, is actually going to suffer, right? You're going to become very sensitive to painful stimulus. So under 59 but that's a leader. Most people are so depressed that they actually want to off themselves. Uh, so definitely get some help if you're down here. Next, you have between 50 <laughs> to 200. Now, this is where this is the lowest I got. I'll never forget this. It was 147 or 50. I ran it to 150, but it's around 147, 150. And of course, that's when I was doing everything wrong. And that's why I keep telling you guys, the testosterone does not drop with age. It's the lifestyle that men adopt as the age that drives testosterone. And once again, this is not my opinion. The research is vast on this. It's just the TRT industry wants to make money. So they keep telling you guys that, oh, it's just a magic number you hit. And then boom, your T drops. Wrong. So I was doing everything wrong everything wrong i was spending all day indoors i was working on my that's when i was going balls deep on stock trading so no distraction all day on my computer sitting no sunlight barely eating slept like four hours a day it was terrible you know and, you know on top of stress and disease and you know illnesses and stuff like that uh so at 150 how do you feel well once again your second drive is garbage uh your aggression is low right low to mid depending uh, on the person your energy levels are trash. You don't want to do anything. And obviously, uh, you know, the anxiety and fear thing, again, that's 50 50. It really depends on uh, your history of anxiety and fear. Mood and depression, garbage. And obviously, pain tolerance uh, is reduced, right? So that's not a level you want to be at. Next, you have uh, here, when you're around 200 to 400. Now, shockingly, um, the only thing that's going to drop the most is your sex drive. Once again, right, your libido is going to go down between 200 and 400, but it's not going to be permanent, right? You're going to have these random spikes in sex drive, and then it's going to go down. Another thing you're going to notice is your refractory period is going to be extremely long. So if you do bust a nut, um, it's going to take you a long time, you know, to get horny again because the fact that your T levels are low, that's going to make it so that your testosterone to prolactin ratio is off. Uh, so you're going to notice a drop in sex drive, but it's not going to be completely crushed. It's going to be up, down, up, down. Your erection quality is going to suffer. Uh, morning mood is probably going to be one time every two weeks if you're lucky. Um, some people get it more, some less, because it depends on nitric oxide and blood flow, a bunch of different things. Uh, your motivation for status, again, is going to be shaky. Uh, energy level is going to be low. Anxiety and fear, again, mid-range. Mood and depression, again, up and down. When you're between 200 and 400, Things are going to be very volatile, right? You're going to have random bursts of, you know, energy and mood, but then it's going to go right back down, right? Because your body can actually sustain um, those heightened levels. Um, next, you have, uh, so if you're here, again, try to get out of that range. Who's next here? Who's next? All right, so next you have 400 to 600, right? So if you're around 400 to 600, believe it or not, um, Again, most things are going to be in the mid-range. Sex drive can be okay. Some people have normal sex drive in that range. Motivation for status is going to be fine. Energy levels are going to be fine. Uh, anxiety and fear, again, it depends on personality traits, but it's going to be somewhere in the mid-range. Um, as far as mood and depression, same thing, right? Your mood is going to be, you know, somewhere in the mid-range. Not too low, not too high. You know, you're just chilling, right? Um same thing with your pain tolerance, right? So most people are here. Most people are between 400 and 600. So they get random bursts of motivation, of energy, then it goes down. Um, at least you're not going to be like 200 to 400, right? So you're still going to be volatile, but not as bad as down here, right? So most things, for the most part, you should be stable. Now, once you get to 600 to 800, 
Now that's where things get interesting, right? So again, all else equal, assuming no more estradiol, you know, the main estrogen, no more prolactin, no more cortisol, no more CRP, inflammation, blah, blah, blah. Sex drive is going to be high, right? Sex drive is going to be high. Motivation for status is going to be high. Energy levels are going to be great. Anxiety and fear is going to be almost non-existent. Again, assuming that your SSBG is fine, your free testosterone is high, assuming your DHT, dihydrotestosterone is high, um, as well as its metabolites. Uh, mood is going to be great, right? You're going to feel like you know, you're going to wake up every day, ready to tackle the day. Energy levels are going to be fine. Pain tolerance, good. You're going to be able to push through pain. Um, uh, Andrew, Andrew Huberman, when um, he popularized the phrase saying testosterone makes effort feel good, that's kind of true, right? The the true version of that statement is it makes status boosting effort feel good. It doesn't make all effort feel good. That's completely wrong, right? If so, if you tell somebody with high T to go run a marathon, he's going to say, fuck you, right? He's going to have zero desire to put effort into that. Now, if you tell him, go run a marathon and your status is going to go up or you're going to be called the top dog or whatever, then out of nowhere, he's going to have the motivation to do it. So testosterone doesn't make effort feel good. It makes status boosting effort feel good. It's a big difference. Um, and I can show you the science on this, but I'm pretty sure he probably dumbed it down, you know, to get it out to as many people as possible. So your motivation for status is definitely going to be high here. Right? Now, this is where things get crazy. All right. So let's look at 800 to 1,000. Once you get in the 800 to 1,000 range, oh, my goodness, sex drive high, aggression levels high. Again, motivation for status high, energy levels high. Anxiety and fear, what's that? Uh, mood, great. Uh, pain tolerance, great. I mean, that's where most people are in the prime of their life, at their peak, when they want to just conquer everything um, and pretty much fuck everything that moves, right? So 800 to 1,000, you're going to feel pretty fucking good. Next, we have uh, 1,000 to 1,200. All right, I'm going to put this in this range. Matter of fact, I'm going to put... I'm going to speed this video up. So 1,000 or 1,600, I'm going to put it all in here. So boom, boom, and then boom, right? So anyway, from 1,000 to 1,600, right? So first, let me do 1,000 to like 1,200, right? Which is my man GSP, the GOAT. So everything is enhanced. Everything is enhanced, right? Your sex drive is so high that you literally want to fuck everything that moves, right? Obviously, you know, no gay shit, right? No daddy. But you are extremely horny. Obviously, your desire for polygamy goes up even more. I made several videos about that. Humans are not monogamous with polygamous, and the higher your testosterone is, the higher your desire for sexual variety. Sorry, sexual variety. The downside is you also get desensitized very fast. So you, you just want constantly new cheeks, right? That's why if you notice, men at the top of the testosterone range, you know, are all, almost always involved in, you know, in sex scandals. Look at the presidents, look at the NBA players, look at the UFC fighters. Not all of them, but for the most part, you know, especially the ones who get caught, obviously, they're almost always involved in sex scandals. Think about it, right? Look at the Michael Jordans, look at the Kobe Bryants, rest in peace, look at the Mike Tysons, look at Bill Clinton, look at <laughs> look at Trump. You know, it's not by coincidence. It's just biology one on one, evolutionary psychology. The higher your, t your net estrogen status is, um, the higher, remember, just have some fluctuates, right? So don't just pick one snapshot in time. But the higher your net estrogen status, the more you're going to be obsessed with cheeks. Not just cheeks, but novelty, right? So meaning clapping your wife is not enough. So at that level, sex drive is high. Aggression is to the roof, meaning motivation for status. Energy levels are sky high. Your VO2 max is crazy high. Uh, you want to just randomly get up and go for runs. Um Anxiety, non-existent, you know, again, depending on what it is. Obviously, if you broke, you know, if you're facing eviction or something, you're going to have some, some fears. But overall, you fearless, total badass, right? As far as mood, mood is great. And here's the downside. Pain tolerance is so high that you're going to end up injuring yourself. And that's why I was telling people that there are, there are many downsides of uh, high androgen status. The body does not like constantly high androgen status. One of the downsides is, you, you feel so little pain that you literally push through so much pain that you will injure yourself. You will snap your elbows, you will snap your knees. That's how I got most of my injuries when I was up there, right? Never got up here, but when I was in this ranch, I got so many injuries. I didn't care. I was fearless, delusional, right? So it's not always a good place to be in. And that's why I was saying in the other video, right? Your body's going to, when I say your body's going to look for ways to bring you back down, the body doesn't know what the fuck it's doing. It's just homeostasis, right? So inverted U-curve to everything. Being up here comes with a ton of benefits, 
But holy fuck, it also comes with a ton of downsides. Uh, another another thing is that's where most teenagers are when they're at the peak of puberty. And the motivation for status is so high that they end up doing what? Committing most of the crimes. There's a reason why over 90% of murders are committed by men who are around, you know, teenager to mid-20s, right? When the T levels are super high, they become fearless. They become extremely sensitive to status threats and uh, the whole nine yards. Uh, another downside of being that high in T is that your immune system is suppressed. That's another downside. Testosterone suppresses uh, a big chunk of the immune system. Um, but your body usually finds ways to bring you back down and auto-regulate. Uh, what's another downside of being up there? I'm trying to see if I remember correctly. Uh, I already mentioned you constantly want to clap cheeks. That one is annoying. Uh, oh, by the way, your erections almost every day. Morning wood almost every day throughout the day. <laughs> Just nonstop erections. Uh, what else? I mentioned pain tolerance. Um, yeah. Oh, as far as mood, yeah. Sky high. Uh, pretty much you feel immortal. Now, let's get to the last ones. Over 1,600, right? And believe it or not, yes, that's doable naturally. There are studies that back this up. Uh, it's just very, very hard and unsustainable. Um, now, when you're up here, over 1,600, uh, I think the most I got was over 13, 14. I got to double check. But I never got to over 1,600. So I'm going based off, from here now, moving forward, I'm going based off clients, people that went from natty to PEDs, and I'm also going off the scientific literature. So up there, first things you will notice is you become, your mood is so high that you become delusional. Like literally, you become delusional. You, you actually think that you're him. You think you run the world. You think nothing bad can happen to you. Uh, again, that's assuming high total T, high DHT, high free T, free DHT, blah, blah, blah. Right? High, super high net energy status. You feel immortal. To the point where it's actually a bad thing because you end up doing stupid things. Um, your pain tolerance is through the roof. So that's a, that's where a lot of people get injured. That's where a lot of people are injured and still go to the gym and train. You know, I mean, you become a fearless badass to the point where it's actually detrimental. Uh, your anxiety and fear is so low that you end up having no respect for authority. That's the downside. You end up breaking the law. Um, you can see you you end up <laughs> you end up becoming the perfect warrior, right? You 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 don't care. Uh, Nobody can fuck with you. I mean, pretty much you literally delusional, right? So it's like down here, but enhanced to the max. Your energy levels are through the roof. You randomly want to get up and go for runs <laughs> for no reason. In fact, most people up there end up overtraining, right? Because they, they just constantly want to move. Same thing with animals. When you inject animals with super, super high doses of, of testosterone, you see the same behaviors. They stop being afraid of predators. They clap cheeks next to predators. Um, they fight all the time. Especially if you look at the study on red deer and chimps and stuff like that. It's hilarious. Same thing with lions. When the T-levels are super high, they become fearless. They attack elephants. They attack rhinos. And unfortunately, they don't live long because the T-levels are so high. That, remember, we have anxiety for a reason. We have fear for a reason. Right? When you nuke your fear and you nuke your anxiety because your T is too high, your DHT is too high, then you end up doing dumb things that eventually get you bodied. Uh, what's another thing that's being reported? So I mentioned energy. Oh, motivation for status is at the highest. In fact, those are the guys at the top of the world who start world wars for no fucking reason. Um, these are the gang leaders, the guys at the top. Um, I mentioned, oh, and you also become pretty much Machiavellian, right? You start to really develop, you know, uh, signs of the dark triad, right? You become narcissistic, your psychopathy goes up, and you become very Machiavellian, right? Again, super high testosterone it's not always a good thing guys uh everyone thinks that everything is perfect no there's an inverter you curve to everything so that's how every testosterone level fails like i said i've been from here all the way to here never been above 1600 so above 1600 i have to go based on studies and experience from clients um so yeah hope that answers all your questions don't forget to join the school community and don't forget to buy the ebook support the channel all that good stuff all right i'm out